Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are experiencing some turbulence. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, remain in your seats and uh, keep your seat belts fastened until um, I turn off the fasten seat belt sound. Thank you very much. When I was asked to come here and, and give a talk, I asked about the theme and they said it's turbulence. And in my recollection, in over 30 years of giving talks, I had never ever used that word in any of my speeches. So I had to go and, and do some research. And the first thing is to think, when do I hear that word the most? And it's when I'm sitting in an airplane and all of a sudden the pilot says, we're going through some turbulence, please fasten your seat belt. So I asked you to fasten your seat belts for 12 minutes until I'm done with this talk. What causes turbulence uh, during flights? in a very simple layman's uh, description. It occurs when uh, winds happen and the moving speed of that wind is different from the speed of the airplane and bumps happen and that's what you feel. And the difference in speed is what causes turbulence. So that led me to start thinking a little bit um, about this word speeds and the difference in speeds and uh, the first question is, what, what are all speeds available for species in the world we live in? And we all know basically everything is moving from a speed that starts with zero and as fast as the speed of light. That's the fastest speed we know, which is 300 million meters per second. So between zero and 300 million meters, everything is moving around us, including us as human beings, electrons, uh, waves, photons. Everything is moving at speeds between zero and 300 million meters per second. In comparison, we as human beings, the fastest human being can do 11 meters per second. So on that scale from zero to 300 million meters a second, we as human beings are very slow moving species. We have to realize that. So what happened, the human beings realized that quite early on, thousands of years ago, that they are slow and they went through the first revolution which was basically uh, discovering the wheel or horses uh, and using them to accelerate, to move faster than they could as normal human beings. And what that caused was the first differentiation between different civilizations. Civilizations who discovered the wheels or the horses earlier than others surrounding civilizations managed to surpass them very fast. You go through hi uh, history, you'll find that every civilization that moved faster through wheels or any kind of animals actually that they harnessed was surpassing the surrounding civilizations by quite a bit. And that stayed for a long time until the next revolution happened 4,000 years later when human beings in the Industrial Revolution discovered the internal combustion engine, which is in the car of everybody sitting here today after 150 years or 170 years. That engine has allowed people to move even faster. So from the normal speed of a human being to the speed of a wheel or a horse to the speed of a car and then a jet and so on. That has all happened between those two first two revolutions. Then after much less time, we didn't have to wait 4,000 years, we waited only 150 years and we're now experiencing the results of the next revolution that we're in, which is the digital age where not necessarily physical motion is involved, not necessarily we as human beings are moving much faster anymore, but there is data moving very fast. Imagine if you had to carry the encyclopedia from New York and carry it and move with it to Shanghai. You know, 26 bands of the encyclopedia on your shoulders, walk all the way to Shanghai. How long would that take you? You can do that in a second today over the internet. A terabit per second is what people can move now, actually many terabits per second 
can be moved uh, 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 in, in the form of data, which means you can really move much, much faster than you could physically ever do. So that started you know, telling me that the concept of speed, which relates to turbulence, is actually a moving concept, and over time, uh, there have been several revolutions, and there may be more coming, that affect how fast things happen. So the next question was, why do people move? Why do we move? Why does data even move? And in the most simplistic way that I could think about, it's moving from one point to the other is caused by two things. The point you're at, you're afraid of. You don't like, you hate, whatever you call it. It's not a comfort zone anymore. You want to leave that point. And you want to go to a different point that you are dreaming of, where you have a vision for, which is something you like to do. So point A and point B, the speed that you move at is actually a function of how much you hate where you are today and how much you love to go. The more you hate where you are today, the more you love where you want to go, the faster you will move. That's in the most simplistic way that I could think about. And we never think about it this way, but that's almost a fact why we are moving things. Sometimes the dream is very low. It's to go and get a bottle of uh, 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 Pepsi from somewhere. That's not a dream, that's just a goal but it's something you want to have. And maybe you're thirsty, so that's the thing that gets you moving. And when I thought about it, I also thought about the story of seven people who were all very poor. So the, the afraid of starting point is that they were very poor. They went to bed and they all had the same dream. And the dream was very simple. They dreamed that they were hunting ducks and then they became all of a sudden very rich. All of the seven people had the same dream. The first one woke up, he forgot the dream. There was no dream. So he stayed where he is. Second one woke up, remembered the dream, but didn't do anything. Yeah, I had that dream, it's just a dream not doing anything about it. Third one, remembered the dream, thought about it, said, ah, this is something that can make me very rich. So he went out and tried to hunt ducks. But obviously, he did not equip himself correctly. He didn't have the right rifles, he didn't have the right training, etc., etc. So he went out hoping he could find his dream, but did nothing because he was not ready for it, he was not prepared, etc. Next one, remember the dream and said, I don't know anything about hunting ducks, so let me study a little bit. So he started opening books or went on Facebook or on Google, hunting ducks, what kind of rifle, what kind of this, started that, took a course, took a second course, went to get a master's, and he's still studying until today. So he studied and studied and studied and did nothing at the end. Another one, remembered the dream, went out, read a little bit about it, got the right tools, because he read, yeah, you need this type of kind of rifle, you go to that location, that's the best place you can find ducks, etc. Started hunting, guess what? He got some, and at the end of the day, he had hunted ducks, but he didn't get rich. So where's the dream? Why didn't he come true? Well, he didn't know how to correlate hunting ducks with getting rich. The dream said so, but he couldn't correlate. And then the last one who remembered the dream and did everything right and got all the tools right, got the right training, and, and then built his own business model. If I hunt ducks, 
there are the feathers, I can do this with the feathers, I can sell them, there is the meat, I can do this with the meat, I can sell, and started completing the story, is the one who got rich. Now that story, how come it relates to this very simple thing? They were all very poor, they were afraid of staying poor, they had a dream, but not everybody who is afraid of something and who has a dream moves at the right speed and moves in one direction that's the correct one. A lot of people, when they are afraid of something, they start moving and moving and moving, but they are making turns. They are not moving forward. They are just afraid of something, but they don't know how to get out of it. A lot of people who have dreams, but don't know how to get there, get lost because they don't have the right target for it. It's like moving in, an, in a place you've never been at without a map. You don't know where to get there. So basically, the problem really is that today, a lot of people have a pain, they may have a dream, but they don't speed enough and get there at the right time. So today, the problem really is, and that's back to the redefi redefinition of turbulence, is that data, information, everything is moving so fast. Everything around us is moving very fast. For the last 150 years since the Industrial Revolution, and then in the last 20 years since the digital age and internet revolution, things have started working at a, a big differential speed, meaning instead of me being a little bit faster than you, or maybe twice your speed, the difference is not anymore two times, or three times, or four times. The difference is 500,000 times, two million times. There are people who are moving data and capitalizing on it, analyzing it, and doing something useful with it at this speed today. And there are others who are just watching, and they are living in the same place. They are living in this globe that we're all partners of, but the speed differential has become immense. And that brought me back to the original problem of turbulence when you're sitting in a flight and winds are moving fast and, and the pilot is trying to navigate and get himself out of the turbulence. And my conclusion is really that the turbulence in this world will increase and not decrease because there are the deprived who cannot move, who don't have the means, who don't have the tools, who are not even thinking about the problem. And there are those who are really moving faster and faster and faster every day. They have the technology, they have the innovation, they keep moving and moving faster. And then there are others in the same world who are moving or very slow or sometimes not moving at all because they are only doing a random motion. They are moving in a random way that doesn't get them forward. So that differential, I expect to grow, not to go down. A lot of people are saying, yeah, somebody will catch up. Yeah, but to catch up, you have to move faster than the person ahead of you, like in a race. The problem is the person who is ahead of you is actually accelerating and accelerating using the knowledge, using the information they have, and you are unable to catch up. So uh, I hate to say, but it's going to be a very turbulent world unless somebody resolve that, uh, resolves that problem because moving at different speeds will create clashes, clashes in terms of cultural, clashes in terms of ideologies, clashes in, in many different ways because those who are slow have no other means to slow down the fast ones except to clash with them. Uh, I hope this is not very uh, disappointing uh, or depressing, uh, but it's an eye-opener that we all should keep in mind where do we want to belong, how fast do we want to move, are we moving fast enough, are we doing the right things every day, and this is every day, every second, every minute. Are you really using your time in the right way? Are you capitalizing on the most scarce and important asset you have ever been given, which is time, or not? All of those questions, I think, will lead to us belonging to one group or the other.